This is Mercy Russell with a Remarkable Relationship Show. My goal is to bring a fresh perspective to you on all things related to how humans develop their individual brilliance while navigating the excitement, stickiness, and resistance in their relationships. In my 40 years of working as a psychotherapist and consultant, I have been continually amazed at the ways in which people overcome challenges. I hope to share my experience and insights to, so that you can find magic in your relationships. <clears throat> so today, I'm here with um, Chase O'Donnell. Um, Chase and I, um, we, we're going to be talking about our experiences of dating. She is in her 30s, and I turned 70 today. Chase and I met on a spiritual retreat this summer. When I found out that she earns her living as a stand-up comedian, I asked her to join me on the show, and she eagerly agreed. And so as we talked about being single and dating, we began to compare the desires and challenges of a woman ready to start a family life with a post-reproductive woman. <clears throat> Naturally, we compared the desires and challenges of men in our respective cohorts, as we've experienced it during dating. Our surprising and mutual conclusions brought us full circle to our original connection as spiritual seekers. You know we will be laughing, so I'm happy you're here to join us. <clears throat> so, hello, Chase. Good morning. Hi, and happy birthday. Oh, thank you. <laughs> what a sort special of. day. And I'm, yeah, I'm just so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you. It's a pleasure for me to start the day. And the decade with you oh my god <laughs> let's not even go into this decade oh my it's, god. it's really freaking me out a little bit so so, so mercy can i just interrupt yes. for just a quick yes. second we mm -hmm. could do two birthday uh references we could do an older version which would be okay. <laughs> pretty simple right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay it's all right like okay. or what the kids like to do these days Don't show this shit. okay <laughs> so i think that's perfect for today in the demographic. Yeah, okay. Perfect. You see, you Thank see, you, you, Benny. You're welcome. Yeah. You a little go. intergenerational <laughs> mix, right? <Exactly. laughs> yeah, I'm now like on the committee for the 50th reunion, my, my college 50th reunion, wow. which of course brings up all that old music again. And so I've been around a lot of people turning 70. Um, anyway, I don't want to talk about that anymore. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just feeling youthful today. So that's the good news. So I want to start by talking about how we met and what each what what brought each of us to Marie's retreat. Um, so just, I love that. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, we met on Marie at Menu Cherry's retreat in Greece, and um, I mean, if people are listening that know this channel, they'll know her her talk show. Right. Um, but yeah, I. I got one of her audiobooks. It was like I downloaded it. It was how to get in touch with your spiritual guides. Mm -hmm. I'm very into all of that. So mm -hmm. that book I like listened to nonstop. And I was like, who is this woman? She is amazing. Mm -hmm. And her voice just like would put me to sleep. And I would just like, oh, I need to look her up. And obviously, um, I just became so impressed with her and everything she does. And on the website, it said there was a retreat to Greece and it was like very last minute that I applied and I was on the waiting list. And then like a week before, uh, Jen emailed me and she said, there's two spots that opened up and I begged my mom to go with me. Mm -hmm. And um, we went very last minute. That's right. You And you came. Didn't you come a couple days later than, or a day I or two? I came late, yeah, because you, I, I had booked a commercial, which um, for me was exciting. And I yeah, had of course. It. Yeah. It's like, I, of course, like I book a commercial <laughs> and I'm supposed to be in Greece, but I made it work. I did both. You did. And it was really great. Um, and you just sort of jumped right in. And there were a couple of mother daughter, you weren't the only mother daughter. Yeah, you know, three pair. mother daughter pairs. Three mother daughter pairs. It was cool. So, um, uh, for those of you who don't know Marie Manucheri, I, I found her mostly because a friend uh, emailed me a 
notice about a co- the course she was giving on Shift Network, and I think it was about manifestation. I think I might have listened to her radio show. That's I think my primary introduction was the you know the YouTube, the podcast of her radio shows. And quite frankly, I'm trying to remember what really caught me, but I know that there were a number of things that she said. I've been a spiritual seeker my whole life. And and Marie, by the way, is a medical intuitive. She's a nurse, a nurse, and she discovered her abilities while working as an oncology nurse in a hospital. And um, a lot of what, and, and what she knows is a lot of which has just been, you know, you might say downloaded or that she's picked up herself she hasn't had a a particular teacher but she has a different spin on a lot of the that knowledge and I think that's what appealed to me and then um I was kind of looking at my summer options and I put myself on the waiting list and I thought well if I'm supposed to go I'll go and then all of a sudden I get a call and there I am and I just a, 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 a retreat on an island in Greece just sounded like what I wanted it and was magical. It was really great. <clears throat> yeah. The most incredible trip I've ever been on, for sure. Yeah, it was really, it was really wonderful. So that's where we met. Mm-hmm. And um, um, I would like to talk now uh, to introduce my audience more to you and tell me a little bit about your background and how you became a, a professional comedian. And I'm yes. saying that with I, comedian, I-E-N-N-E, <laughs> right? So. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I grew up dancing um, my whole life since I was like two. So performing, I've had my 10,000 hours in. Um, <laughs> and with dance, I feel like there's an element of acting in all those like ballets I would do. If you're playing a part, you're acting. So acting came very... Um, I don't know, it just like kind of fell into place. I just loved it. And I um, started studying theater and I went to a performing arts high school where I I majored in theater in in Mm -hmm. high school. Mm -hmm. Anyways, um, then I went to college, majored in theater there. Um, And all the while, like comedy was my favorite aspect of it. I just love to make people laugh. I love taking any scene and turning it into a comedy, even if it's mm. like Chekhov. So um, <laughs> that's my, a special <clears throat> talent to be able to do that. Thank you. <clears throat> well, my teachers didn't love it, and they would purposely give me dramatic scenes because <laughs> I would make everything funny. Anyways, the program I was in in college <clears throat> was very much uh, about teaching us how to create our own work. So I left college with a one-person show, tools how to write and create my own stuff and um i had booked an off-broadway show right out of college so i moved to new york and did that and when that ended i just did my one person show from college and restructured that and took that off broadway and so that's all i've ever known is just like creating my own work and doing it so Mm stand-up was just another tool to write comedy and perform it so I started stand up as soon as I graduated college. And then um, the wonderful thing about that is you don't audition and nobody's like, you're not waiting around for someone to tell mm-hmm. you your cast, um, which because this career path is very much just like twiddling your thumbs, waiting to be cast in something. Uh-huh. So um stand up you just get to do it yourself and luckily I was good at it and I um that's now what I do it's taken off so <laughs> <laughs> I know it's quite um, impressive I was um I had the pleasure of seeing you perform as an opener for um Christina P who mm-hmm. I you know was new to me I mean I wouldn't have known about her or gone to see her if I wasn't chasing you so <laughs> chasing, uh, chase. <laughs> chasing chase right exactly hmm. uh, yeah, she's a, a wonderful comedian that I I'm very lucky to be on tour with and I'm getting to see what it's like to be that big of a headliner mm-hmm. and she's taken me under her wing and has shown me the ropes and I'm I'm very very grateful for it right 
So I'm just I'm going to give a little impression of what okay. happened just to give people a taste. So I'm okay. at this club, and I'm not going in uh, <clears throat> in Scottsdale. That's where I live in Scottsdale, Arizona, and it's um, I, I'm not used to going to clubs like that anymore. So it's a little you know it, it, interesting. Well, you're opening and it's fresh. Everybody's walking in, kind of having their first drink, and you know I think. Um, as we talk, people will get more of a flavor for you, but you're very funny, but also very, what would you say? You know, you, you, not, uh, you're not dramatic. Or and, like no curse words or like no, <laughs> very, no, very and, clean. Yeah, very clean. Is what you would and, call me. And anything that is just suggestive, <clears throat> right? You're sort of titillate you're, 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 you're the, the titillating parts of your story that people always want to hear you know um are very um yeah there you could you could share them with your you know 13 year old yeah grandkids okay. could watch it <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. and so it's a, and it's uh, um but also i also felt like you know, i was just talking to you and you were just being funny you know like you weren't putting on a show like it was just like oh this is what it would be like to be talking to chase when she just starts talking about her life right <laughs> but um and then christina comes in like a hammer right <laughs> she's like a whole different thing and of course by the time she comes in everybody's had a couple drinks uh -huh. so the audience jumps in on things that you know with topics that <clears throat> normal people don't talk about in their living room so yeah yeah so it was quite an experience and we are, so it was people are always like oh whoa i wasn't ex they're either like i wasn't expecting you to open for christina or i wasn't expecting christina's <laughs> act to be like that after coming from yours so we're very yeah. different yeah very different <laughs> but a really nice mix in a way you're a foil for i don't know if foil is the right word but yeah you are so the contrast really fits um so what I want to do now, I do hope we get people get a taste of you, so they all go on your website and follow you and <laughs> find you. <laughs> so, um, uh, so anyway, let's just start. We want to talk about dating today because when we started talking, we fell into that conversation and said, "Let's talk about this. This could be fun." Mm -hmm. um, wh what were your early experiences? And I mean, like you know, as a teenager in college, you know, what what was dating like for you? in the early years and then what kind of relationships have you had up until this point love this okay well teenager and college are very different for me because in high school i was extremely innocent i was like watching disney channel every day i didn't know like having a boyfriend meant anything more than like holding hands like i was really that innocent mm -hmm. um so um I ended up having a boyfriend my senior year of high school and it's so sweet. He was, I'd known him since I was two. We had the same birthday when we were younger. We used to have like shared birthday parties. We're family friends. So he's like a very mm -hmm. perfect first boyfriend to have. He's like family to this day. Um, and we dated for five years. And then I had another serious relationship when I lived in New York doing like comedy out there. Um, all in all, I've had like three serious relationships. And then uh, between those I've dated and I'm currently dating now. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I turned 30 last year. So I'm now in this like new age range of dating. Like I found that dating in my twenties was very easy. Like mm -hmm. I would just point at someone and then I'd go, you, that's, you're the one I want to date. And then we date for three. That's how easy it is in your 20s. Now, I'm really struggling. Uh -huh. I think something changes when you turn 30. And guys aren't as, um, either they're like already settled down, like they found mm -hmm. their person already. Or if they haven't, they're like looking younger. Because like, they can still get like twenty year olds. So now, were you using dating apps, <clears throat> online dating apps, the whole time? Yes, Tinder was invented when I like was a senior in college. So that's been like all my dating experience has mm -hmm. been on 
Tinder, Bumble, Hinge, now Raya. It's all the dating apps. Yeah. Okay. I don't know how you meet someone <clears throat> other than that. Other than that. But you do get to, with a dating app, you now you can choose in a club or a bar or a gym too, you know, if you just sort of, you know, approach somebody. But <clears throat> but it's different in a dating app because you can actually like them or swipe right or say hello or, yeah, you know. I, so. I find that the type of guys that frequent a bar or club are not the type of guys I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. So if I go out to one, that's not the type of where I want to meet someone. Right. Or they're all, at this point, they're all so young at the clubs. Uh-huh. Interesting. At the clubs. At yeah. the clubs, yeah. <laughs> um, so, of course, my dating history was quite different because, well, I didn't date in high school. Uh, I had friends, but I wasn't, I always say I wasn't really dating material. So I was, um, I was friends with most of the boys I, we were in classes together, but it really wasn't, I think I had my first boyfriend, real boyfriend when I was a senior and uh, the spring term, my senior year and that summer. <clears throat> Look at us, we're so similar. Yeah. 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 And I am, um, um, and I guess I was pretty innocent because there wasn't much out there. To know, I remember reading Lady Chatterley's Lover and thinking that was really risque. In fact, my my best friend from third grade reminded me of that. <laughs> you know? Or Playboy I've magazine. Never heard of Lady Chatterley's <laughs> Lover? Well, Lover. okay, yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> I got, I got it's all up. suggestive too, you know. So there's anyway, all to say. And then I got to college. Excuse me. <coughs> Darn it. Um, we're both and, and there wasn't dating. We just hung out, you know, and um, I mean, people paired up. That was for sure. But you didn't. And you did. I think I did get asked out on some dates when I was a freshman. First thing, you know, the older this, you know, the guys would kind of comb the freshmen. And so um, and but then I, I had my first serious boyfriend as a senior in college. And then we lived together and. We dated often. We lived together for a while, broke up. Then we dated again when we lived in New York City. And then, and then I met. I met my uh, husband on. Um... Oops, it's time for a break. What already? Yeah, it's time for our first break. Oh, so... I love the anticipation to know when you met your husband. <laughs> well, I've had two, so uh, I'll tell that. But I'll try to keep it brief because I want to move forward. But um, anyway, this is Mercy Russell of the. Or, uh, Remarkable Relationship Show. I'm here today with my guest, Chase O'Donnell. We're going to take a break, and then we'll be right back. All right, at the first break. Alternative Talk 1150. We're on your radio at 1150 AM. We're on your HD radio at 98.9 Channel 3. So many ways to listen. We're on the web at 1150kknw.com. Streaming live audio and video as well as MP3 archives of many of our shows. So many ways to listen. And now, we're on your smartphone or tablet. Download our free app in the Apple App Store or Google Play and take Alternative Talk 1150 anywhere you go. So many ways to listen. Hi, tune in to my new show, The Remarkable Relationship Show, with me, Mercy Russell. I bring a fresh perspective on all things related to how humans develop their individual brilliance while navigating the excitement, stickiness, and resistance in their relationships. Wednesdays from 9 to 10 a.m., and you can visit my website at leadershipwithmercy.com. Every two minutes, a child becomes a victim of sex trafficking in the U.S. It's happening right now. Don't turn off the radio or change the channel. Don't cover your kid's ears, no matter how much you want to ignore it. Child trafficking is real. In fact, it's happening in your town. And you know what our greatest weapon against child trafficking is? It's our children. It's time to act with PACT. That's Partners Against Child Trafficking. PACT works to teach students how to identify the warning signs of child trafficking so they can help other vulnerable kids around them. PACT student ambassadors receive in-depth training on the issue and design a project to raise awareness, reduce victimization, and disrupt demand. 
Visit pact.city to start donating today. That's p a c t . c i t y. And for as little as five dollars a month, you can help end child exploitation. Alternative Talk 11:50 online at 11:50kknw.com. All right, stand by. <laughs> uh, good morning. This is Mercy Russell with the Remarkable Relationship Show. My guest today is Chase O'Donnell, and we're talking about dating. As um, she just turned 30 and I just turned 70. So <clears throat> we thought we would compare our experiences. And I was just talking about my early relationship experience. Um, so uh, you're after about the, to say when you when you met your husband, yes. Yeah, so in the middle of dating this old boyfriend that was kind of off and on when we were in New York, um, I went to a meditation retreat and I met my first husband on a meditation retreat. And it was a group. It was um, a TM retreat, and I'd been involved in TM and worked in an office and full of people from TM. And he was he was good close friends of. A friend of mine. So at any rate, we made a connection. We'd left the retreat. We got married like within six months, <laughs> and it was a little pretty fast. And um, would that be considered a shotgun wedding then? <laughs> is it? Well, it w no, a shotgun wedding is when you're pregnant. Oh, that's right. Oh. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Phew. No, it was a drug. <laughs> it was sort of like a dr a drug a drunk wedding because we had been meditating intensely. Ooh. So you might have, we might as well have just been met at a bar. Gotcha. Right? But at any rate, we um, we did have a son. We moved to Los Angeles. We moved. To, he was coming to Vermont, but we ended up going back to L.A. It, w it really was a good marriage in many respects for me. And but after about five years, um, uh, it wasn't working. So anyway, so then I was single for ten years, and during that time. Again, I, you know, I just met people like, you know, someone I worked with and I lived with you for a couple been, of hours. Was this like was, you were in your 30s at this point? Yeah, I was in my 30s. And, but I was a single mom. <clears throat> and I thought, well, I'm attractive. I'm professional. I have all this stuff going for me. And I didn't really see how my circumstances, you know, <clears throat> not having extra money and being a single mom would be an obstacle in dating. And that age, you know, um, a lot of men really didn't have children, right, or were divorced. So even though I wasn't that young, <clears throat> so, but I did. I had some kind of brief relationships with men, but it was clear that even though it was exciting, it wasn't going to go anywhere. And then I, <clears throat> I moved to and started hanging out with a close friend from college. From, and we went to college in Minnesota, but we were both from Vermont, and we both left Vermont and become professionals and came back. So I ran to on the street. We started seeing each other. We were always really comfortable with each other, and it was a long courtship, so to speak, because he was very careful about taking on my son, which, you know, he didn't have to. I mean, my son's father was involved, but at any rate, and then we were married for we were together for 15 years. We had a son together. And my my older son, his stepson, is actually now living with him with his wife and daughter, my granddaughter. So that was a really nice connection. But again, these were relationships I already had. So I didn't have to go try to find somebody new or off the street, right? So that takes me up yeah. to my current episode of dating, which is what I've done since then. Um, <clears throat> So tell me how you started. You were in a relationship recently that you broke up. You had a breakup and then yeah. you started dating again. Yeah. What do you want to know? <clears throat> well, I want to, so I want to know what your experience has been like since it, since you're, we're talking about current dating now. It's been a nightmare. Mm -hmm. I, I guess I broke up with him last November. So it's about a year. Um, I was like, you know what, look at me. This is like a, like a spiritual surrender type thing. In my head, I was like, look, I'm creating the space in my life to bring the right person into my life. And this is going to be easy. I just passed a test with the mm -hmm. universe and I 
I did something really difficult and hard and I could have stayed with him, but it wasn't right. And now I'm going to bring the right guy in. So like that was the mindset. And I was actually really positive at first, but the more dates I went on, the more like jaded I've been getting because they've all been, uh, first of all, who someone looks like on the app is not <laughs> who they are. <laughs> And there's so, there, I feel like I've been getting catfished or just like, I think I have a crush on them and then I meet them and I'm like, oh, never mind. Like if I had mm. met you in person, I would have never wanted to go on a date with right. you. So can you explain what catfishing is for those who are not currently active in the dating world? <laughs> oh, sure. Catfishing is when you have like your profile pictures uh, and they don't look like what you actually look like. Like it's a lot of these guys are putting pictures from like years ago, which between like 25 and 35 is a big difference. So like it's I don't know. They just they're not the same person. Mm -hmm. as yeah. Pictures. Let me explain that one for you. Uh, I don't have hair now on my head, but I did then. So that would be one way of looking right. at it. <laughs> That's one way. To explain <laughs> OK, it. Right. there you go. Yeah. They've changed. Yeah, yeah. they've changed yeah. a little bit. Well, the other thing I've found is that there'll be a profile there. In fact, I've had the same person on different web websites with the same profile continually, um, you know, like me or approach me. But then when I actually start to chat with them, it turns out it's not that person. It's a fake profile. See, now that hasn't happened to me. Yeah. That's so that, another level of catfishing. Yeah. So I'll get messages. And they're very short. Well, how was your day? Let's talk. And oh, they want to chat. And I'll say, let's do a video chat. Well, they don't want to do that. Right. And then, they're but not. their language is very simple. It's clear they're not really from the United States. You know, they're not English yeah. speakers. Let's put it that yeah. way. So then it's like, oh, in fact, I, I liked Tinder, but then I went off it because I, it was so many, so much catfishing. You were getting just people just saying they were someone else yeah they it's a fake profile they steal oh. photos in fact a friend of mine showed me uh, i was looking at a profile i said wow look at that guy and he says look well, he's a model and i'll show you you can he gave me an app Spooky. where you could find yeah so people put up fake profiles yeah and i think that's how they scam people on dating websites you gotta be careful <clears throat> but tinder I, I yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you do how much yes. money have you lost right <laughs> Well, I had to change all my bank account passwords because mm. um, I got scammed, but not on a dating app. It was through yeah. Instagram, but I fall for these things. Anyways, I <laughs> don't click any links is the moral of that story. Definitely. But I talked about it in my standups. I've been getting a lot of material out of dating, but like <laughs> one guy was just like, so like, uh, I do you is your do you dye your hair often like do you color your hair and i was like not that often and he goes well it's time your roots are showing which i thought is rude and then he goes um like do you oh he goes it's so interesting you don't use perfume <laughs> you use your own body scent and these are just things that i find so rude uh -huh. for a guy to be saying on a date and these are the dates i've been going on yeah they've been that or like the guys telling me about his throuple situation he was just in showing me pictures of him in bed with other girls um it's been like really shocking mm -hmm. and i and then it makes me not want to go on date well, I've, um, <clears throat> yeah, I've had plenty of, um, I guess mostly on Tinder, I have to say, um, <clears throat> you know, sexual overtures, let's say, and pictures and stuff and requests for pictures. And oh. <clears throat> I said, well, they're already up there, <laughs> you know, you know, <laughs> anyway, so that, that was, um, so at any rate, I didn't join online dating till 2018 and I hired a coach because when I was single, I wasn't meeting anybody. I mean, I don't go to bars and I don't drink, which I think is another um, 
slow down with dating because you don't even have that first little glass of wine or something. And, um, and one of the reasons I don't drink is to screen out men who do drink. Because <laughs> oh, <laughs> if I figure a man who does drink isn't going to want to hang out with me because they aren't, they just aren't, you know, it's maybe, not in the Maybe fun. you need to start drinking on dates. <laughs> I'm not drinking for a guy. <laughs> but I, it, I, unfortunately, I don't like sober been... dates. <laughs> <laughs> well, I figure if I'm sober, then, and I can handle the, all the stress of a date, then they can too. And if You're they right. can't, it's okay. I've had guys drink and it's sort of one date. So anyway, I, but I wasn't meeting anyone. So I thought, Mercy, you really want a partner. You really should do something about it. You know, you can't just sit here forever and wait for somebody to show up at your door. So I hired, but I was nervous about it. So I hired a coach and I had photos taken and I own the clothes, but I don't usually walk around like that. And <clears throat> cause they're, but at any rate, it was fun. And I, you know, it was cheerful. I had a lot of fun at first and I was surprised. Oh, like I was how many men there are out there. I had no idea. And um, also men, I, you know, a lot of men liked me a lot. And, of course. And, it, and um, even now, initially I had my age lower because my dating coach said, look, with the algorithms, you're 65 or 66, whatever I was, you don't look it. So say you're 59. Well, then I got really tired of saying, you know, I have to tell you. I'm six years older or, you know, at any rate, so I finally put all my, so my age is today turning to 70 on the, all the dating apps. And, and the thing is, it's, yeah, it's fine. I still get a lot of interest from men considerably younger than me. And then I think, well, why would they want to be with a woman my age? You know, I'm suspicious of a man who's 10 years younger. You know, like, what do they want? They're going to want to live with me till I'm old? I kind of don't know, you know. Is like, are they just looking for something else, right? Well, we talked about this, like, I, I was thinking, oh, no, guys want to be with someone in their 30s when they can get someone in their 20s. And you were like, it never ends. The guys yeah. that are older. Oh, yeah in their seventies can get someone in their fifties or four. It's a, like, it never ends. It ne no, and men are always, I mean, generally they're always going to you. want younger. Yeah. In fact, they, they, I read, I got something about how to marry a millionaire and they said, you know, depending on your age, you have to marry older. So if I would have to be marrying a man in his eighties and yeah. the problem for me, me too. Is, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. You can get well some, <laughs> You can get someone in your in their forties, and and as far as I'm concerned, there are a lot of attractive men in their forties, right? No, so. and not to me. <laughs> that's see, that's that's, that's what's the really, issue. That's part of the issue, and I'm, I'm the same age. I, my first husband was older, and I said I'm never doing that again because it's a generational difference. Like he thought mm -hmm. the women's lib was really great because she'll change the tires and the oil in the car too. In addition to doing everything else. Yeah, so what, being in the same generation is really helpful. Yeah, that helps. So my second husband was in, was my is my age. And that's nice too. Except men my age. A lot of people my age, not just men, get old. Because it's a mental thing. Mm. You know? And yeah. then they look and old. They don't you're young. Well, I call you myself stay young. I call myself immature. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> for, my, for my age <laughs> an immature 70 year old i like that it's got a good ring to it good ring to it <laughs> so anyway um and then then my age i'm just wondering about you know um uh, maybe i was thinking recently you know anyone who's single my age has been divorced never married or widowed like something has happened in life that didn't really match the plan we probably all had, which was to marry and live happily ever after if we married. And so, um, and people deal with that in different ways. But then also people have children. They've had the household, you know, or they've had the career and they, now they want someone to play with. They may not want a partner to live with, right? That, so 
I haven't run into a lot of men who want a wife to take care of them because maybe I just don't attract those kind of men or I'm not attracted to them. But um, yeah, it's um, now I've had some great experiences along the way. So that's sort of the good news is that uh, the experience has really helped me grow. Um, uh, until recently, I've just started seeing a man and I called before this, I called myself the queen of the one date. Yes. I think I had over 90 dates. Oh my God. And then I talked to more men than that. That was just the number of men I actually met. And oh um, my gosh, I need perfect. to do that. Because it's one a numbers day. game. Yeah. Well, I think it's a numbers game. There was only one man out of all of those, and I never met him in person because we didn't live in the same place, who I was really taken with. But then, you know, he had things he had to deal with in Isn't his life. Isn't that crazy? All yeah. 90 men, 90 men, you didn't like them. Well, they weren't a match. But they that was, then I, but then I started thinking, you know, some of them I thought, well, I'd like, yeah, I'd like to go out again. I'd like to just get to know somebody and do some things. Oh, and right. let and sometimes maybe, it was like. Yeah, maybe let end. it develop. Neither of my husbands were men I, you know, fell in love with right away. They were yeah. kind of long simmer things. So I thought, why not do that? But then the men I met like that, they'd say, do you want another date? I'd say, I'd love to. And then they'd never hear from me. And I'm yeah. like, I know I wasn't attached or was heartbroken. And. I have some bizarre ego where I don't take it personally. I yeah, just no, don't think good. I it's never feel like there's something wrong with me. I think yeah. it's not a match, you know, That's <clears throat> I correct. never, I never worry like, like all these dating, you know, all these advice columns, what you can do to make him comfortable or whatever. I just am not worried about that. <laughs> you know, yeah. like either they have a good time. That's and my, and my goal attitude. on a date is to have a good time. Let's just, and I may, you know, could you see that person right away? And you go, you know, right away. This is, you know, right away. You know. I know, you know, right they, away within, know. within 20 seconds. So, but my policy is we're going to have a good time. Okay. We're going to enjoy this lunch or this coffee. He's going to walk away feeling good. Okay. Even if I said, no, I don't want another date. <laughs> guess, guess what? I'm going on a coffee date right after this. So okay. I, I'm going to have to try to have a good time. Yes. You make it a policy. You're a performer. Okay. You just like, you want the guy to walk away laughing. Well, the guy does. <laughs> <laughs> they have a really fun time with me, but yeah. it's not always reciprocated. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like I'm hosting a podcast when I'm on dates. Yeah. Oh, do they love it? Oh, because I'm making sure the conversation's going but I need to make sure I'm having a good time. So yeah. I need to figure that out. Yeah, that yeah. is the trick, you know, too, yeah. is that, um, and then it kind of gets tiresome after a while. And there's, you know, I don't think men understand what women do for a day, you know, because <laughs> we, we get dressed, we put on makeup, we make ourselves look good just in case he's the one. Yeah, know? just in case. <laughs> or at least I do. And, um, so if somebody says, oh, let's meet for a drink. I'm like, really? You're going to just, you know, maybe buy me probably now a Diet Coke or, yeah. and then you're going to, uh, to see if you like me well enough to spend more time with, but I've put all this effort into getting together. It's coffee fine, you know, but anyway, so. I know. I'm driving all the way out to him. I don't yeah. know why I do this. He lives like an hour away. So, um. He offered to come to me. I said, no, no, I'll come to you. And I really, I need to work on just like accepting like, yeah, come to me. Great. Okay. Done. Yeah. I, I've been doing that too in this one, but I have a sort of a different feeling about it. It gives me the feeling of more control. Yeah. Because I, I just, yeah. You can, you know, I can go and leave when I want. And, you know, I mean, not that that's been an issue, but, um, yeah. But Wait, it, so you were saying you met a guy. Well, I've had a couple of days. I've, I think I've had three now, two, three. Well, three. I know. That's very exciting. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's different. So 
Um, Queen of one dates no more. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see <laughs> how long he puts up with me. So <laughs> I think it's time for a break. We're going to take another break and then we'll be back and we're going to talk about um, more experiences dating and also what we've, you know, where we've come around after all this time. This is Mercy Russell with a Remarkable Relationship Show. My guest today is Chase O'Donnell. We'll be back after this break. All right, at the break. You pledged your life to serve, to make our country stronger, safer, more free, more equal. You worked tirelessly, made sacrifices, missed first steps and birthdays, lost loved ones. At VA, we don't see the setbacks endured. We see lessons applied and passion driving you upward and forward. We don't see all the masks you wear, but we hope you can set some aside. We embrace your uniqueness and won't trivialize your past, your fears, or your hardships. We can't promise to heal all wounds or wash away all trauma, but we do see hope, a path forward, a future. We see all veterans. We see you. An opportunity to help you achieve a new mission, whatever that may be. Learn how treatment works and recovery is possible. Visit maketheconnection.net. Hi, tune into my new show, The Remarkable Relationship Show, with me, Mercy Russell. I bring a fresh perspective on all things related to how humans develop their individual brilliance while navigating the excitement, stickiness, and resistance in their relationships. Wednesdays from 9 to 10 a.m. And you can visit my website at leadershipwithmercy.com. It's time that you are heard, and I don't mean in just a conversation. I mean really heard. Imagine hosting your very own radio program on Alternative Talk 1150. Talk about being heard. Call 425-653-1150 right now to learn how affordable it can be to host your own radio show. Time slots are going fast, so take hold of this chance by dialing 425-653-1150. Alternative Talk, we have an opportunity waiting just for you. Multicultural, multidimensional even. Alternative Talk 1150. <laughs> Good morning. This is Mercy Russell with the Remarkable Relationship Show. And today I'm speaking with Chase O'Donnell and we're talking about dating. She's just turned 30 and I just turned 70 and we're both single. Um, and, you know, during the break, we were talking we, just before the break, we were talking about our experiences dating and some of the challenges that we were up against. And during the break, we got a little uh, more specific about it, but we're not going to do that on the show. <laughs> what I just a tease. Really, yeah, it is a tease. I'm just saying. We just had a really good conversation without you. Exactly. <laughs> right. So it's all to say there's more to this. But I, I guess I feel like um um I mean in my for my age, and I think we were talking about the same thing, you know, that people are come from different circumstances and you want to match on those circumstances. It's not just a matter of the person and are you in love, but it there's sort of practicalities that matter too. For sure. Yeah. Should we uh, should we elaborate on that or we leave it at that? I think that that covers sort it. of says it. The suspense That's was killing me right there for a minute. Oh my <laughs> god, it really was. Well, I'm going to say I'll say something in general. So, okay. uh, this somebody recently said to me that. Uh, um, that he had learned that women this very general thing about evolution that men are looking for a woman who's going to be able to bear children so they're going to look for a figure that 
is healthy and shiny hair and <clears throat> traits that tell him this is the person to be reproductive. And then, and women are looking for a, a partner that's going to provide security and protection for herself and that child. So she's looking for this, you know, person to have physical strength and then of course, material security. And that would be a general way of talking about what we were talking about specifically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I'd like, <laughs> I'd li and I will say, I'd like to think that I'm above all that, <clears throat> you know, that evolution isn't determining who I am, but I do think I have to confess that it's probably a factor, that it is a factor for me. Yeah. And it has to do, and it relates to my, my emotional comfort. It isn't just a matter of judgment of is somebody good or, you know, right or wrong or the right person for me. It has to do with, am I physically comfortable? And some of those factors come into play. Yeah. And it is really, it's so fascinating talking to you about dating because we are in such different places in our lives. And yet I feel like I struggle with very similar things just in different ways and the dating is dating is just universal it just no matter where you are in your life there's the same things you're going through it just is at different points right and um <clears throat> the even the evolutionary you know so you're getting you know you're at the age of a dating men who will be thinking about starting a family so you think oh yeah all these reproductive factors are going to be really important but when you're po what I call I call myself post reproductive dating in a post reproductive situation you think okay it doesn't matter now right we I've had you've had your children I've had my children I'm not going to you know I'm not uh, going to give you children um, <clears throat> so what else really we can just really get down to what really matters between you and me but I think we're still we're so hardwired this way that even post-reproductive people dating are still driven. That's so a lot of men are interested in younger women, right? Yeah. And, and um, a lot of women are interested in men with money or fancy cars or, you know, in my age or um, because they're, you know, even if they already have their own, they're still they're still sort of automatically driven toward that. Now let's not. We're at the last segment of our show, and I really want to get to the <clears throat> to the mm, I guess more the growth or spiritual part of it. I titled this show "Finding God on Tinder" oh, because you. I had some really amazing experiences dating that related more to my spiritual growth than. <laughs> My ability to find a husband. <laughs> so. Totally. Well, I mean, we talked about this a little um, in other conversations, mm -hmm. but that like this whole journey of dating and finding someone else, it's come back to me, like learning to love myself and not worry so much about if there's a man in the picture and uh, this like self care and taking care of me and knowing that like, okay, maybe one day I'll be in a relationship, but this is a special time with just like, I just get to worry about me and take care of myself and how beautiful that is. So I really love that right now. And it's, I think what you and I, and I have sort of gotten to a very similar place that I realize more and more I even think the key to me being in the right place or vibration, as Marie would talk about, to find uh -huh. what, <laughs> what I really want is simply to really be happy with where I am and, as, and to have all the feeling in my life that I would have, that I think I would have with that partner. Um, I, had, I had two experiences. One was I saw a profile. I'm actually sitting next to my mother in her bed in Philadelphia, and I'm flipping rapidly through, uh, I think it was Tinder or Match, because a friend of mine had said, oh, there's this man from Montreal, and I'm, you know, da-da-da-da-da, and you should find him. So I was looking for this one person, and I thought I probably just went past the love of my life, because I'm looking for this person she 
and you don't find somebody you're looking for. No, you never do. And this I, I try. Yeah, right. <laughs> so this profile pops up, and there's, there's this man with this most amazing smile, and it just hit me like this. And I was like, oh, my God. And I look at his profile, and it's classy in all the ways that I that really appealed to me. And you can tell he's really smart. And at any rate, but um, and so we started chatting. But when I saw that smile, I what happened was I have no idea what happened. But I said to myself, God loves me. Oh, and I can't imagine. In fact, I actually asked him, like, who took that? Who are you looking at? And I was, it was as if he was looking at me. And I thought, wait a minute. He just, this is a picture someone took. He was smiling at somebody else. Turns out he, he took it. It was a selfie. He took it himself. You know, oh my and, God. but the immediate thing I got was this hit of you are loved. And I thought in a big way, not this, it couldn't have been by him. He didn't know me, right? Yeah. It was the weirdest thing. And um, then the second experience was with another, with this other man who uh, I, we had such a wonderful connection and I walked away feeling like I really loved myself. Aww. I just started really loving who I am. It was really and I think it was because of the way he connected with me. And um, I mean, I didn't know him well enough to know he loved me, you know, I mean, it wasn't because we just, we had a couple episodes of, you know, chatting. He was in one state and I was in another, but I, I was like my, <laughs> I was like, I have to write a book about this. But maybe this is yeah. why I'm dating. Maybe this is why I'm dating, you know, isn't is I'm not going to find a partner this way, but. I'm having these other experiences of like loving yourself. I also like, I, I've come to the, like, I, I realize like, I, I don't want to just date someone to date someone. I'm so happy being alone mm -hmm. that I think the reason I go on these dates and I'm like, ugh, is because I, I'm not looking for just a guy. Like I'd rather be single and if someone comes into my life to enhance it, great. But other than that, I'm so happy being alone. They better be great. Otherwise, right. I, don't, I don't need that. I don't need to date just a guy to date a guy. Yeah, I, I feel very much the same way. And that I, um, <clears throat> I have to say that's been my experience with, you know, uh, the three date <laughs> gentlemen is that I will and you know I will probably have another one <laughs> it's just that I all of a sudden I'm like wait a minute how much do I want my life to change and you know what how would it change and I really like it I and so now I'm like all really appreciating all these things that I have in my life and I really like them bingo you right. nailed it because, yeah, I went on a date with a guy who afterwards was very much like, let's do everything together. We're in a relationship now is pretty much how he was like acting. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, wait, I'm not ready for that. I don't want that. But it might have been, I, it just wasn't the right guy. But it did make me appreciate like, oh, no, I love my life right now. Right. And I don't want to jump into something. So. So Chase, we're at the end of our hour, and I know we could talk more about this. Oh, good, yeah. <laughs> well, all ends of it, not only the dating, but the whole experience of just settling into your own life and yeah. um, just being happy where you are. Right. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Where are you off to next? Um, I go to New York for a week on Monday. Oh, cool. Yes. Are you coming to Tucson? Are you coming back to Tucson? Um, I haven't rescheduled that show, but I'm yeah. sure I I have to. So yes, I'll be back in Tucson. All um all my dates are on my website. Yeah. Um, okay. Chase. We can Donald we can Donald. chase chase yes you can. on her website. <laughs> yeah, and, that, and that's so you go with Christina P, but you also have your own your own own shows, right? Yeah. So people can find you through Christina P. If you, that's her 
name if you want to search her and then also Chase O'Donnell and we'll have your links on our website and uh, you know everything <clears throat> so thank you Yay. so much Chase this was such thank fun. you I just love yeah. chatting with you yeah thank you. it's thank so great you. yeah we'll talk soon okay okay <laughs> bye <laughs> bye